Uh, g'day team Johnny, clan, members, subscribers, and everybody who watches my videos. Um, welcome to a series of videos where I'm going to be doing, and I'm going to be talking about places I've been. Maybe pass on some uh, advice to people with traveling and stuff like that. Uh, the first in the series is going to be Akigahara, where we talk about the forest, um, what I've done in there, how to get there, what to expect. And also a bit later on, we're going to talk about some of the bull crap being talked about this forest from um, other people and handing out really bad advice, which is concerning. So first of all, you're going to land in Japan, you're going to land at Narita uh, or the other airport there, I can't remember its name, Henderson, I think it is. And the best way to get out to here is, I firmly believe, is bus. A bus is about probably half the price. The trains can get really um, uh, messy. So the first time there, you don't know sort of where you're going. You're asking people, you've got to get from this train to that train, to this train to that train. And um, if you arrive at you know, 6 p.m., you can be stuck going through you know, customs and immigration and, and all that kind of stuff. You can actually not make it out to here. So I, I, I strongly recommend that you um, just spend, if you're going to catch the bus, to spend the night in the airport. The airport's safe. You can just plug your phone in, roll up in a corner, get some sleep. There's food there. There's machines there. There's, you know, smoking areas if you smoke. The, the Japanese airports are amazing. So then you land at Kwichiko. Now, there's a lot of hostels around here and stuff you can stay in and stuff like that. Now, this is the main way to get to the forest. You can catch a taxi, but it ends up like about 70 or $80. So I suggest you just come straight to Quichico Station and you've got all your trains arriving from different places and stuff like that. And this is where your bus buses leave. They, they go to the forest. So you've got your green line, your blue line. I always go on the green line and quite simply you turn up, you line up on a green dot, which is right about here, and then you pay your money and jump on the bus. And it'll take you, quite scenic, Take you woo, and then you'll get to see all the lakes and beautiful views and stuff like that. And I always seem to get off here, Lake Seiko. There's buses that uh, arrive basically here in, in Akihara, and you got the main bus stop. It's about there. But I, um, especially if I'm doing a going in at night, I always stay here, the beautiful little place of Lake Seiko. And Lake Seiko is where I captured that, um, I'm very proud of it, that drone footage of um, in the morning after I'd been in the forest all night and I got back and flew my drone at um, Mount Fuji and got the amazing footage, which you can see now. You got the uh, ancient Japanese village, which is pretty cool. And you've got lots of little um, places you can go stay, like tradi traditional Japanese rooms and Japanese houses. In this area here is where I stayed in that um, house um, where I, for four nights I had those two entities come out of the forest and um, make my life a living hell. So. I suppose this is the most famous part of Akigahara. This is the car park. You got your shop and all your trails and stuff like that. Um, but Akigahara is a big place. It's like 12 square miles. So the forest of Akigahara goes all the way to Lake Seiko. I don't know whether they classify this as Akigahara, but it's a huge place. So I always sort of just classify this as Akigahara. All that. So, even on this side, like, I'll get into that later. So, yeah, Lake Seiko, a beautiful place to stay, and you can basically just walk straight in the forest. So, when I first got here, I was in a hostel in um, uh, Quichico, and then I was going to come out here and have a look around, and I was like, oh, st I didn't have much money, so I was like, stuff paying for the bus every day. So, I come and stay in here. 
every morning or at night, this is the road I'd walk up. And I'd go along there to get into the, I suppose, entrance of the forest. So my first Akihara trip, um, I went there. I walked up here and I come in here and I went straight down into here. So somewhere about here. I ended up and this terrain I've never seen anything like it. it it is crazy you really got to um through this area here there's not many trails or anything you really want to find your deer trails if you want to go off track uh, you really want to find your deer trails um, and just have a look it gets pretty crazy in here and you can see this bit here I think I come back through this bit so I sort of went into here and I went around and I come back through that because I remember going through this crazy stuff like turn the camera off, go through stuff. You need both hands. So, um, yeah, when I first ever went into Akihara, the first one was down in here. And then at night, when I did the ghost hunt, I walked up here and I got here about 11, I left about 11 o'clock at night, I think, and I walked up here and I was just looking at stuff and stuff like that. And, and then I just went straight in. So, I went along here. Oop, what's this? I went along here. And then I went down like this. And I think I've got this right. So, I'm pretty sure that's where the, the ropes are. Um, for that main bit. There's three zoned off areas. Or forbidden zones as they call them. There's one, this is sort of one. This is sort of one. There's another one up here. And if you walk along here, there's actually a track that goes along the road like this. And then it will go up. And I think it's about here somewhere. That's not exact. That's just roundabout. So there's another one here. And this map doesn't show all the walking tracks at all. So it might show the main ones, but it, it doesn't show all the tracks through Akigahara. So yeah, the first time, bang, into this area here. Uh, it's a long walk. Y your legs are going to get tired. Now, about the bus stop. You don't have to go deep in Akigahara to find bodies. That, that's the thing that I suppose blew me out the most was they're, they're everywhere. Like just around here, you'll find bodies, you'll find string, you'll find belongings. It's that crazy. Where I found that woman who, who um, sadly took her own life was here somewhere. And that was like, you could see her off the truck, hanging a tree. There's been two bodies while I've been there, there's been two bodies found. One was about here. The other one was about here. So that's not far from the bus stop. So when people, you know, they catch the bus um, and they just hop off the bus and they walk straight in here. And then don't ever think that you have to go into here to find bodies. A lot of them are just around here. Or off any of the tracks. Along here, there's a, a track that goes along here. There is so many belongings and stuff along here. You'll find string, backpacks, everything. Like, the road's here. You only have to go in like 100, 100 metres, a bit more, and you'll start discovering backpacks, um... You know, all, all all stuff like that, which is very, it's very sad. But that's Akihara. So a bit of advice to if you first come to Akihara and you do want to go off track, I recommend this area. This area, you know, you can go in here, you'll, you'll find everything that Akihara is famous for. You'll find there'll be bo there could be bodies, which, um, you know, be prepared for that. Uh, that you'll find campsites, you'll find backpacks, 
you'll find uh, little caves. Um, but the, the, the main advice I want to give you is if you want to go experience Akihara off track, I recommend here. A lot of walking tracks through there. The main reason why I recommend it is you've got a road that goes around it. So whichever way you walk, you end up at a road. When you come down into this area, you've got to be on your on your game because <laughs> it can get pretty crazy down in here. It get crazy in there too, like for walking and, and looking around, but. I've found a lot of stuff in here. A lot of stuff. And even when I come into about here, there's still ribbon and, and stuff like that. Where I found that stone was somewhere, the stone with the symbols on it, I think it was round about here somewhere. But, um, you know, it's a crazy forest, man.